our next speaker is here to speak on imperfection is perfect. And that's how I could relate to my imperfections of not finishing my book. He's a speaker, leadership specialist, and a seasoned coach who brings with him close to 20 years of experience in areas of business strategy and development, organizational behavior, talent, and performance um, management. All right, so we've showcased him on one of our spotlight events, and he's here today. Let's put our hands together and welcome the one and only Rizal Aziz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kish. Wow, man, he is so tall. I am so short. If I stand next to him, quite a disappointment. Really, I thought he was going to be that high. Okay, guys, thank you so much for having me today. I can't lie to you. I am so nervous. So nervous. And after the, I saw Julian, I saw Scott speaking, I saw Shireen, immediately I feel so small. I feel so small. I feel that I have not done enough. I feel impaired. I feel incomplete. In fact, I feel imperfect. Now, is that okay? Is that fine? Okay. So today, I'm going to be talking about something that is really close to my heart. Imperfection is perfect. And I want to teach the guys who flew in from uh, other places, uh, all from all over the world, I'm going to teach you this one Malay word that I truly believe in. It is called Bidang Terjun. Okay? Bidang Terjun basically means that when there's an opportunity that comes in front of you, just go and do it. Are you ready for it? No. Do you know what you're going to do? Not really. I sort of know it. But just give it a go. It may not be perfect, but from that experience is what you learn. Now, just a bit of a uh, background of who I am. Uh, I was working in Australia for seven years, and I moved to Japan for seven years, 14 years away. I only came back to Malaysia for 13 days, and that was a flyover, stopover from Melbourne to go to Osaka. Then I came back to Malaysia in 2013 and worked in senior management up until February 2021, and now I am a trainer and also a speaker. So I'm just a baby, one and a half years. And because of the people that I met in MAPS, especially credits to Johan, he's so kind. He told me a lot of things, a lot of things that I can do and learn about and how to build my business. And I'm so happy after one and a half years of uh, being a trainer and speaker, I've spoken to at least 7,000 people already. Thank you, thank you. But um, what I realized, I'm still incompetent. I'm still incomplete. I still have much to learn, and today is evident. After listening to what all the speakers have said before, gosh, I'm taking notes. Even though I've done this so many times, I realize that I cannot do what they're doing. And that is what drives me. And that's why I'm talking about perfection. It's perfect. It's what is needed to be able to move forward. Now, the term on the right-hand side there says wabi-sabi. And this happened uh, during a time in Japan. I remember it clearly, December 2012, it was winter. Uh, I was so stressed, demotivated. I felt like the whole world was against me. I expected myself to be the best type of manager at the company that I was working with. Where did I find myself then? I was at the platform. This is the platform. I was standing at the edge with both my feet here, and I wanted to jump. And I'm not lying, I wanted to jump. I was waiting for that next submarine to come, submarine train to come, and I wanted to jump. Because I had it. I can't, I can't match my expectation. I wanted to be this guy who can lead this organization, but I couldn't. Until suddenly, Sumasen, Oni san, Dajabu desu ka? train ran by. I cried. And this is the real, real story. Every time I think about it, I still have you know that memory that is in my mind. I spoke about it to my boss, and my boss said, Riza, wabi sabi. It's okay. Imperfection is beautiful. Learn from it. You don't have to be that someone that you think you're supposed to be. People are made imperfect. Understand your imperfection, then you can move forward. Now, if you go to Japan now, you ask them, what is wabi-sabi? They will say, Eto, uh, I don't know. Lah. I think it's the, you know, the thing that you design, the cup, the mugs, the plates, and so on. Actually, no. General people in Japan don't know what wabi-sabi is. But for me, it just means that 
the beauty of imperfection. That's the meaning over there. The key word that I took from the definition in here is transience and imperfection. So transience is a state of change, that everybody is going through a state of change each time. And you're gonna learn, you're gonna find out how. So I'm gonna show you three things that you should consider whenever you feel that you're imperfect or incomplete. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. And the first thing first is that I want you to reach in your pockets or in your wallet and find a coin. Let's go and find a coin. Get a coin. Semua sekarang dah pakai touch and go in wallet, right? Never mind, you find a coin, right? So, I, I found this from, from, from YouTube, of course, but I use it for myself to be able to look back and understand. So a coin is some, a currency that will last multiple lifetimes, multiple generations, and so on. But one thing for sure, the beauty of the coin is there's a date on it. And I always look at the date and I think back, what was the worst thing that happened to me on that particular year? What was the emotion that I was going through? I can tell you, you can say, wow, at that time, I would have felt this, uh, I was going through exam. That was the toughest time ever. I got retrenched. That was so tough. Somebody I loved and cared about passed away. Fast forward to now, where am I? Did it change me? Did I die? Am I a better person? It's not moving? <laughs> okay. So this is the coin to pass, all right? So if you have that coin, it's like a magnetic time traveling system that you cannot change your destination. So look at your coin, have a look at the date and think back and reflect. And I always look at the coin. I just pick up some random coin and once in a while look at it. What happened to me in that year? What was it that I learned? How has it changed me, okay? Now when you look at the coin, I'm going to give you the next step, which is very critical. When you look at the coin, there are five things that you should consider when you're looking back in your past life to be able to understand imperfection. And I didn't for I forget about this, forgot about this slide. <laughs> See, imperfect. Okay, so this is a picture of me uh, back in the day when I graduated. I graduated, I look happy, but all my results were all D's. And then after I graduated, I colored my hair blonde and I had a lot of fun. Did the guy who graduated could imagine he would have that so much fun the few years after in Australia. And now, there's the guy on the far right who is now speaking to more than 7,000 people. Would the guy with the blonde hair know that I would end up becoming like that? The story is so unique and during each phase of this change, is a transitionary stage. Never in one of those particular stages in my life was it ever perfect, okay? So let's go to the five things. The first one is that whenever that you look at your coin and you look at that particular year, always think in threes. What has happened in the past? What has happened in the most recent past? And what is happening currently to you? A lot of people always so focused on the now. I'm struggling, I'm unable to do things. I can't do that. Take out your coin and look back at the past and see that, hmm, okay, at that time I struggled. Later on, I picked things up. And where I am now? Now try that. That's from a time perspective. I call it a sundial. Now I took this off uh, a basic thinking tool uh, system, but I changed it to match what I think is a way to evaluate imperfection. Next one is the compass. If you take out your coin again and you look at it, I'm very sure you would have moved into different, different locations. Like for myself, my story went across different countries. You are not stationary where you were before until now. You would have moved somewhere, you would have gone somewhere. It could be that you move from, if it's a work perspective, you would have moved from one department to another department, to another organization. Appreciate the movement. And then you realize that, hey, I'm not that bad. I actually did something. There is some form of movement. And no one is stationary for at a single location for a long time, unless you're dead. Okay? And the next one here 
interestingly, is called the bowl. The bowl is very unique. The bowl tells us that whatever that we face in front of us, that is the environment that we have. Anything that's arm's length, things that you can see, things that are around you, try to be as aware as possible of what's around you. Sometimes when we are depressed, we don't see what other things are around us. We're constantly comparing things to other things that are beyond our control. So the bowl is all about the things that you have around you, close by. If it's your home, then it's what's within the four walls. If it's your work, what is within the organization. A lot of, a lot of people go too critical, they start looking outside, and you start blaming things outside of your control, things that are outside of your arm's length, and it's very hard. It's all too noisy. The next part is that once you review back your past, I want you to be able to use the telescope, knowing how to zoom in and zoom out. Look at different perspectives of your experience. Yes, I am struggling now at this particular moment, but what about me within my society or my community? Where do I fit in a larger picture? The ability to see things from a different perspective by going very microscopic to looking at it from a larger perspective changes how you view things. And it's very important to be able to do that. And the next one is the scale. And this is one hard one to be able to achieve. If you're able to then look at your past, uh, look at your life, and be a fair judge. Sometimes some of the things that you do can be great, sometimes can be bad. But we all know, as trainers, we always tell our people, from every negative, there's always a positive. When you want to evaluate yourself, if you find yourself going through challenges and you're imperfect, you need to be able to be a fair judge of yourself. So for my style, when I was working in Japan, when I was struggling, maybe at that time I couldn't think about it, but if I was a fair judge to myself, yes, I was struggling, but why was I struggling? What was I learning from that experience that could have made me a better person? Fast forward to now, that experience at the platform thinking about killing myself then and there, taught me to be a better person, have more gratitude about the things that I have around me. So those are the five things that I think that's critical for you to be able to evaluate yourself and see where your imperfections lie, and then it's not so bad. Now, in my line of work, I run trainings, lots of trainings, and a lot of it is focusing on developing future leaders We've got so many theories out there about things that you should know how to be a leader. There's a five steps, six points, seven elements, and whatnot. And I always tell them, you can always have a look at my LinkedIn profile and see my background. Look, it looks amazing. But the real truth is, behind that is a whole lot of, you know, very difficult journey, up and down, struggles. It is real, right? And then throughout that journey, I'm always questioning myself. I always feel incompetent. I always feel that I'm not ready for anything. But one thing for sure is that once I start to understand my weakness, once I start to understand my imperfections, I know what I need to work on, that I have that drive forward. And this comes to my last part, which is when you have understand your purpose, your reason, and you have, you have already looked back in your life, hey, it's not so bad. That imperfection is just a transitionary period of change for me. It's all about the heart. So the Japanese word for heart is kokoro. And uh, it's very hard for me to explain how, why that particular writing is like that. And some of you who are probably of, you know, are able to write in Chinese knows how to write this. But I always say my tail to my, my, during my training, it looks like a hook. Right? It looks like a hook. So I always say that if you believe in something, you latch on to it, you try. No matter how difficult it is, you will go through a rough patch. You will go up and down, left and right. You will go to trouble and struggles and whatnot, but it's fine. If your heart is in it, then you're in the right direction. It happened to me because when I was 14 years old, my passion was to become, uh, I wanted to become a newscaster. I wanted to meet people, talk to people, and I gave that up. 
here I am, fast forward to now, I'm 45 years old, I'm back to what I wanted to do because I didn't hook, I didn't use the hook in my heart. Okay, as a final part, key point here, I think this is what Will Smith used after he slapped Chris Rock. <laughs> So he said, we are all a work in progress, which is very true. So the appreciation of imperfection, you use these three points here. Acceptance, which is you know, acceptance of the imperfection. Acceptance that you know, we are through a transitioning period at all times. Changing your perspective, using the five perspectives that I shared just now. And then making sure that whatever you do, you have to put your heart in it, no matter what. And from there, you'll be able to move forward and progress away from the insecurities of feeling imperfect. Okay, I'm going to leave my uh, session today. I know that I'm going to, I've got no much time left with this uh, special little quote from Eckhart Tolle. She says, acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. And that's all for me. I did a Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you so much, Rizal.